obesity, a personal crisis, and an epidemic in our community. Whatever you care about, use the Million More March as a springboard to elevate you to the next level of activism. Peaceful protesters, young protesters, angry, frustrated protesters, how necessary are they? I am an unapologetically black man who has a desire to see our community be better, um, for us to be able to be proud to be who we are, even as we're a part of this huge kind of human family. Um, but my passion above all else is to see uh, young people manifest uh, their destiny and their calling. I was a pissed off college student. I mean, I was, I was at the University of Toledo, it's a predominantly white institution. Um, I was there on a full ride uh, track scholarship. Um, I realized that there were some things that were wrong. There were some older brothers on the campus, a, a brother by the name of Gail Nelson. Um, saw something in me that I clearly didn't see in myself um, from a leadership perspective and, and, and pulled me into the Black Student Union. Uh, got me involved in ways that I don't think I was ready to be involved. I moved from Toledo, Ohio to, to the Baltimore, D.C. area to be the National Youth Council Coordinator for the NAACP and, and, and that really was the launch for me. So the, the NAACP, uh, because it has its, its tentacles in all of this stuff, right? I mean, it's, in, it's, it's touching government, it's touching entertainment, it's touching corporate, it's touching grassroots. Um, I was able to learn an unbelievable amount of information. Being at the NAACP set me up uh, to meet folks like Stephen Hill and others, um, who was really, Stephen was really the impetus for me coming to BET, I, I never wanted to be on TV. I had no desire to be on TV. You know, I wasn't coming in, singing and dancing like, yo, put me on. Um, it, it, it wasn't that kind of thing for me. I, I wanted to do hardcore, serious activism, and, and TV for me just wasn't serious. And, and because nobody had ever really done commentary, social political commentary on a rap video show before, it, it was almost counterintuitive. It was like, what are you talking about? You're doing commentary on a rap video show. Tigger introduced me to the audience in a way that I immediately gained credibility. I was able to be myself. I was able to talk about the issues that I cared about. And so that commentary on Rap City led me to being able to do some real journalism work. And by the time you know, my run at BET was over, I had hosted two shows. I had interviewed heads, foreign heads of state, uh, traveled all over the world, and, and really learned journalism. Having this opportunity to shift from, from BET to MSNBC um, was a great one. Um, I was looking forward to, to trying to expand the audience that I was able to speak to. I just realized after a short time there that MSNBC wasn't for me. I had a seven year run with the Tom Joyner Morning Show. Uh, I'm in my second year with um, the Ricky Smiley Morning Show, bringing commentary there. And doing, doing Ricky is fun. Um, I think Ricky is so in tune with his audience um, and, and wants to have fun with it, but I, I've never seen, and by never, I've never seen a radio host as passionate about history and politics as Ricky. I realize that content is such an unbelievably important tool to be able to move people, whether you're moving people to dance or whether you're moving people to laugh or whether you're moving people to go buy a record or whether you're moving people to feel about a certain issue. Um, and I realized how important strategy and messaging was. And so the clients that we have at Illum are crazy wide. Um, I worked with Steve Harvey on his last book, um, Act Like a Success, Think Like a Success. I'm working with a couple of municipalities around the country around what does policing look like um, in, in the next 10 years? And how do we help cities craft police departments that actually are about public service versus control. And so I'm realizing through my client work that I can have a hell of a lot larger impact than I could just as Jeff the individual. So we've gotta be in a place where in our homes, in our communities, we're not diminishing our young people's intellect. I believe in myself wholeheartedly, uh, but I'm constantly trying to put myself in positions to do new things um, that are so outside of my comfort zone that, I, that I'm always questioning, am I good enough for this? Is it, do I have what it takes? I think my kids have forced me to look in the mirror at myself, um, to be able to evolve as a person, 
to be able to challenge my biggest character flaws as profoundly flawed as I still am. I would not be where I am at this stage if it were not for my wife. And so I, I just, I wanna celebrate her all the time um, because I realize that there is a power in relationships that doesn't always exist in isolation. I, I, I could do amazing things and have done amazing things, even in my worst, as my worst self, even when I've been by myself. Um, but being able to become a partner in passion and legacy with somebody. And I want my legacy to be that I used my talent and ability to be able to positively affect the communities that I worked in, to be able to not just inspire people, but create transformative change. <laughs>